Hello, and welcome to a new episode of The Other Russia. I simply cannot believe that this is an episode number 21. And even though we are, well, actually, I, but yeah, I'm going to talk to you about mindfulness and business and unveil and cover the topic of what the fuck does that mean and uh, what meaning did I put behind it. I want to throw something at you here. I've applied for an open course on psychedelics. And I'm going to talk in more details at the end of this episode. I've written it down for me so that there's a hook for you, a cliffhanger, if you want just, you know, to stay with me for a bit and give me some of those clicks. And yeah, by the way, subscribe, share, and throw some crypto in there. Shit, I'm going to do it at some point in time properly yeah i think my feet is lagging again because of the wonderful piece of uh, equipment that i have with me a microphone which is doing really good job in terms of creating this nice sound hopefully but my feet is pretty much fucked up fuck it anyway it's not that uh, you need to see every second of what the fuck am i doing so i'm gonna just continue the conversation going since it's a um, non-stop fiction <laughs> i don't know what the fuck the genre is I guess just talking head some russian talking head or whatever yeah so going back to that main topic the mindfulness and business and why all of a sudden i've decided to talk to you about it today is that yeah again i mean the fucking ai it's doing the job i guess but we'll see we'll see i mean uh, there are some topics that i need to uncover and i looked at them today like yeah i mean what can i say on this topic however i think i can and this there's a lot of background uh, in my life that would allow me to just simply do it i'm just gonna try and close a couple of windows so that my video feed gets better yeah anyway so mindfulness um what is it and people may put various meanings behind it i'm not gonna give you any like dictionary meaning or phrase that uh, i found somewhere i don't prepare much for those for these episodes but yeah just some at least so anyway what i put behind mindfulness is that um a person can be in the moment and be able to reflect on what is happening in terms of his or her actions words and what the outer world is doing yeah, so it was improv, so I guess focus on the internal and internal external world in the moment. That would be probably my definition that I go with. And mindfulness is sometimes either confused or used um, as a phrase, as a, me as a meaning to... Uh, no, let me rephrase that. There are some other variations that uh, people say when they mean mindfulness and uh, there is this other word consciousness however it is different in the, the language perspective though uh, in, in russian for instance there is this word asoznanost which kind of combines the two and i'm not that good with the languages i know just two basically my my native russian and english and yeah just a bit of spanish here and there but unfortunately i'm not that gifted or talented to learn the languages yeah i mean even the english is not perfect so th there it goes but anyway so i like the word and the reason why I threw it out there is that um it conveys a very um not very but just a bit deeper meaning to it so if you've listened to some of those episodes or watched them probably i don't know with the same lagging uh, visual or not but anyway so if you've experienced that thing before you probably could have noticed that i've talked about vipassana as something that was like significantly meaningful in my life and if ever somebody would ask me for an advice like what would i advise to to do like if you're a human being so first go to Vipassana and take some LSD, but yeah, I mean, in a controlled environment in terms of like safety and people nearby surrounding you or 
guiding you through that experience and there are no circumstances am i advocating breaking laws or anything like that but yeah i mean you can find countries and places where you can have it legally so yeah and by the way that that topic in general i'm gonna talk shit law about it because psychedelics is a fucking important part of my life so yeah that spoiler is still there but yeah i mean the thing about mindfulness and why have i put it in the first place together with that um substance called lsd25 um is that it is in a sense same perception in terms of reality so yeah i mean going back to vipassana it is just 10 day meditation i can dig into details at some point in time and give you a bit of a broader overview because it was like a really nice story attached to it in my only experience so far i want to go there a second time but uh well me and my wife we had to reschedule for a springtime uh we wanted to go in november but yeah change of plans that happens so anyway that's like a long story it's gonna require some time so probably yeah let me just record it in in, in case you know i stop talking at some point of time and then there's some time and they're like oh okay i can talk about the boston right so yeah duly noted right so going back to lsd25 and the consciousness and the vipassana and the mindfulness it is pretty much about the same thing about being mindful in the moment about internal and external world and everything that's related and happening with it because it affects it affects like uh significantly our perception it affects um the things that we say the things that we do and it gives this sense of clarity in terms of understanding what exactly is happening so in some cases with, with lsd it's hard to because yeah you don't really know what is happening your entire brain is just interconnected and intertwined at the same moment oh and by the way when they talk about psychedelics in general i mainly refer to substances like lsd or mushrooms because nowadays that meaning that word psychedelics means way more there are other variations of it like an mdma and other substances but yeah i'm just gonna go on that specific direction refer to them as lsd and um, mushrooms so so that those that create this feeling for me mdma is something different more of a euphoric thing but anyway going back to the uh, topic of mindfulness so once you're on vipassana or once you're on lsd you're very concentrated on the moment right not like trying to be somewhere else in terms of like time frame or linearity of it i don't know what the fuck did i just say but yeah anyway um i went to oppenheimer and thought that like oh okay it's a fantastic movie but i don't understand it like 100 fully because of the language limitations of course but i mean get the uh, general picture however i would have preferred to be able to say something like more not yeah, damn not nuanced but more like exquisite you know but yeah anyway so going back to that mindfulness aspect is that when you're in the moment you're concentrated and everything is happening you can keep track you can observe you can kind of take a mental note you can pinpoint it for yourself's attention uh additionally to highlight it again for yourself i mean of course it will help you in terms of everything that you do but yeah let's go back to business like why the fuck does that it is important why the fuck it is important for business so the reason is here that in business i mean you're a human being right so well unless again as usual ai listening to the podcast but yeah i mean you're a human being so for you to be able to function properly and effectively you need to kind of navigate in this uncertain world let's put it this way so what you can do is to just close your eyes and ears and just go with it and you know try to hope that you'll get there eventually but yeah as discussed previously research is important and feedback is critical so that it gives you an idea of whether or not you're heading towards a rock or a cliff or whatever but 
it gives you like the sense of direction of whether or not you're heading in in the right one. So it is important to you know use whatever you can to get that type of feedback and understanding and to make sense of the world. So if you're not receiving such feedback in various forms like phrases or expressions or actions or something that people do you don't know like seriously you don't know you live in your own world but they give you this feedback and it may make you think you know it may make you question something it can make you do something but yeah so that type of feedback and it is critical so in I'm, you know, started from very far, but I'm getting there like slowly, gradually. Just hold on, <laughs> I'll get there eventually. So that type of feedback is critical. So for you to get it, you can just sit and you know, kind of do a retrospective of what somebody said and what what you did and you didn't do, and then kind of combine it with with your own perception and experience and the feelings and check whether or not it is a lie or like total bullshit or something or not but then again it is about like thinking backwards but when you are in the moment you can then be able to change something on the go it means that you don't need to wait for i don't know years to pass or months of therapy or something else too you're right there in the moment and you can do something about it so things that you can do of course would be like significantly different depending on your mental capacity ability to and comprehension of uh, your own self and they written on the temple in ancient greece know thyself, right so this is about understanding who you are what you are and um your I don't know strengths weaknesses character qualities like problems personality foundations pillars or some other shit like that so knowing all this and being in the moment you are then able to kind of change things on the go and make relevant and appropriate corrections instead of like doing something after the time passes so how can you be more mindful there are many ways like shitload of ways and of course by just taking drugs it's not gonna help you it doesn't work like this i mean could be for some i don't know but generally speaking more orthodox ways although wouldn't probably say that uh, the boston meditation is an orthodox however it is about um well, it, it may be orthodox depending on the location, but still. So it's, you know, a way, right? But there are other ways, like generally meditation, not necessarily that extreme ways, like Vipassana, maybe something easier, lighter. And then it could be just, you know, five minutes a day, or there are like hundreds of apps out there that you can use and just make it your personal coach to tell you you know to do something and sometimes it is important for people to kind of be guided through the process so there are apps that can help you and give you that guidance there are uh, other ways but but, <laughs> but but so one critical thing is that it is important to be in the moment and then try to focus on it so this is not necessarily done through meditation it is possible to do it through like a mental intention okay like imagine moments of these deep sensations that you've been experiencing in your life these very intense moments so the, there was something about those moments that made you feel this way so intensely so that you've been present in that moment and you weren't thinking about something that you did or something that you need to do or anything in other buckets but yeah the again the idea here is that you were intentional well maybe not intentional but if you were in that state it means that you can be in such state so 
all it requires is the mental attitude, desire, willingness, concentration, of course, to be in that moment and to be mindful. And why the fuck is it important for business? Because again, people make decisions and so the decisions may influence like lives of other people. Well, in business, it can influence like entire economies. And we're, you know, I've been talking to you about that other project that I've been working on, Sri Shakti, and we're thinking on how do we help people in different structures, like whether it is government or business or NGOs or, you know, just regular society, how to kind of intertwine it all and make it all work together in synergy. And yeah, it's not an easy job to do. And I don't know why the fuck am I talking about it? So yeah, I've been talking about business and you make decisions. So yeah, to make a decision that would influence like hundreds of millions of people or maybe billions of people on this planet, roughly, four billion uh at least but yeah i mean that entire direction and the entire will has to be there for the key people to make such decisions and people typically make decisions quite in an unconscious manner based on their previous experience based on their uh, background based on their knowledge and based on you know their life whatever related to it friends family information they consumed uh, over the course of their life like movies music even books articles and everything and it gives people the ability to make those decisions on the go uh, typically without like sitting there and thinking because this is the uh, result of their subconsciousness uh, doing it for them just giving them this uh end result or solution or phrase or word or whatever so it is there and typically in the majority of our lives we as humans do it i mean we're subconsciously living our life doing something without the intention so what do you mean right i mean what the fuck am i talking here so for instance take an example so you're going to a fridge to open it and <laughs> try to find something there and they're not closing it and going back typically it's done in an unconscious manner however there are cases when you go there and you with an intention to extract something out of it and then use it in the preparation cooking or anything but yeah i mean there, there is an intention there right so there are other cases when you open the fridge and take something out of it without really concentrating on trying to understand and comprehend like what exactly you need to pick from that fridge and use it in, in the preparation in the recipe or just in general you do it automatically so this is the way for our brain to save energy because our brain consumes the majority of uh, the energy of the entire human body needs so that means is that it optimizes processes it makes it, it makes sure yeah i guess that you know the capacity of the entire human body is not up to a certain limit so that there is still like memory left to process the fucking video feedback feed or audio feed or whatever and for this to happen our brains are doing this they're building those bridges between the neurons they build the connections and they automate so yeah that's uh, how we humans roll so we automate some processes uh to a level of uh, unconscious uh what's competence right so there is this quadrant and uh, just to give you an overview and picture it try to so unconscious incompetence and uh yeah I, I can give you my own example so i went to us for the first well it was my first foreign trip in general at 19 years old and i didn't know how to ride a bike well, the reason being is that I was never taught. So yeah, my, my uh, uh, father, well, basically left my life at the age of 12 or even earlier. But yeah, anyway, so I couldn't, I didn't know how to ride a bike. And I went to US and then I had to go to the work using, you know, some means. Well, actually it's just distance, right? So from point A to point B, I need to go there to start the job and just go back or do whatever the fuck, uh, 
I want to. But yeah, the public system, um, transport system was not there in that uh, town. It, it was still is called Gunquit in Maine. Uh, it's a place known for the residency of uh, Stephen King, the author. Right, so I didn't know how to ride a bike, but I've seen other people riding bikes and I was thinking like, yeah, probably it's not hard, but I just didn't ever try it. I didn't need it. And then I was like, yeah, probably it's time to do, because if I was to walk um, to my job, it would have taken me like maybe 40 minutes or something. So I was like, yeah, probably I'm going to learn how to ride a bike. So I bought one and then I was there originally in the unconscious, incompetent state, thinking that it's not a hard job to do. And then I tried to do it first time. And I became consciously incompetent. So I understood and realized that I don't know how to ride a bike and it's not that fucking easy. So, I mean, I became conscious of my incompetence, in other words. So now I realize that it's a fucking job that I need to do. So then I moved with the like additional concentration and the attention and the balance and the focus and everything that goes with it to a state of uh, being consciously competent, like trying to ride a bike and not to fall from it and, you know, go in a straight line. And then, oh, by the way, yeah, I think I can uh, allow it to do a fucking story here. So yeah, then being there in conscious competence mode for some time, like concentrating on my efforts to not fall and ride and use brakes and things like this, I slowly, gradually over the course of time went to an unconscious competence state, which is about riding a bicycle without the the need to concentrate on something. Well, of course, now I need to because I haven't ridden one in a while. But yeah, anyway, so that's the point. So for the four quadrants and typically people are in unconscious competence state of mind because they automate uh, everything that they do um, to the their subconsciousness. So yeah, going back to that story, <laughs> they almost started and almost forgot. So that US trip and I was in Gangkwe, it was like in the outskirts of the town. So I took a bike and I was very much kind of energized and excited that, you know, I can ride a bike. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, I'm 19 years old, like, wow, what the fuck? So yeah, it's insane. And uh, I asked the people in the nearby surroundings, like if they want to get anything from a store, because I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to the store and buy something on a bike because I can ride a fucking bike. So yeah, somebody asked for some chips or crisps or whatever the fuck they're called, depending on the location. So yeah. And then, so I, I told you before that the place that I've lived at is located at the outskirts of the town. And then I decided to not go to the town, like smart decision. Why not? I went in another direction. So yeah, I mean, it was just a one fucking roll and nothing. But yeah, I was riding for like maybe seven minutes or 10 or something like that. I don't remember exactly, maybe less, but anyway. So I, uh, I, yeah, I saw that kind of kiosk, kind of van that sells uh, Jamaican food and was reggae playing. And I was like, oh, wow, that's nice. I mean, I've never seen people from Jamaica. I never listened to reggae kind of in that way because I've listened to it before and, you know, I enjoyed it a lot. But yeah, I mean, that was for me something very special and very unusual. Again, first foreign experience. I've, uh, yeah, then not seen anything outside uh, my border, uh, my borders, borders of the country of my birth. So, well, actually, yeah, it changed over time, but still. So, yeah, I was born in the Soviet Union, basically, and still says that I was born in a city that no longer exists. But yeah, going back to the Jamaican uh, joint or however you call it, so. I stopped by it and just looking at it, the food, not, not understanding like what that food is like. And there's nothing like in the middle of nowhere. So there was just road kind of like highway 66 probably, or yeah, don't remember exactly. But yeah, anyway, so I was standing there and just looking at everything that they do in the cell. And then there, there's this car stopping by and, um, some girls, they stop out, step outside and get go to the that Jamaican joint and they order something and they 
pay for it they take it and you know we have a chat a conversation we exchange a couple of words and then yeah i say that i'm a foreign exchange student spending some summer here work and travel blah 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 like a couple of minutes and then they took off and then i went on riding a bike so probably another like seven or ten minutes i went i found the first store so i got there i went inside um oh yeah somebody asked nasty probably or i don't remember anyway so there was this like uh call iced tea and it was diet one or something like what the fuck is diet like seriously how do you yeah but i was confused they didn't know much about it anyway so then they bought it i uh, went outside that store and they see a car stops by and the, those girls and they're like oh we found you like yeah hey yeah that's me you got me there <laughs> they're like uh want to ride like well yeah sure why not but i got a bike and they're like yeah just put it behind the store like can i do it i mean is it safe they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, oh, okay. So I leave a bike behind. I get in the car. Uh, we ride at the, it's like ocean view. So the road is next to the ocean. Extremely picturesque, very beautiful. So the girls, they start to smoke a, uh, a pipe with uh, with weed. And then they offer it to me. I'm like, yeah, sure, of course. Why not? I mean, weed, great. So, I mean, I got high we they took me to another store i bought something that i needed and then they brought me back to that regional store so the bike was there surprisingly for me <laughs> at that moment and yeah i was pretty high so i got on a bike and um yeah decided to yeah it's time to go back home uh after maybe being absent for roughly two hours or so so i then started to ride a bike and I immediately recognize that I don't remember any longer how to ride a fucking bike. And it was quite a painful thing to do because I needed to go back and uh, I couldn't walk there because it, it would have taken me like a couple of hours because it was long distance by then. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I was trying to ride a bike and then fall and fall and... Well, I, uh, luckily, I didn't like kill myself or injured significantly. But yeah, it was fucking funny right back home. So going back to the uh, mindfulness and the vipassana and why the hell it is all intertwined. So being mindful is about being in the moment, being in and understanding what the fuck is happening so that you can make a relevant decision. And in some cases, it can help you to make good decisions and but if you're not mindful enough, you can make some really stupid decisions that, of course, I made in my life because I'm not a perfect human being, uh, for sure. So going back to that topic of mindfulness and business, it is critical to be in the moment to understand what is happening, especially when you're in a meeting, whether there is negotiation or, I don't know, just a presentation or just general engagement with the people you work with or you know some other human beings and then being in the moment being mindful being present you are then able to listen carefully to what exactly the other party is saying and it is important to understand what exactly do they fucking mean because if you don't listen carefully you won't be able to understand like what exactly the other person is saying because the meanings people are trying to convey are very different from well maybe different from the ones that being understood by the other party so if you ask a person like what the fuck did they say to the second person and then you ask the same person same question to the second person you realize that it may be like entirely different so people tend to misunderstand each other people tend to hear something different the meaning behind words and that is something that um limits people from making great decisions from again understanding the needs of other people and then be able to work together effectively and again for this to happen you need to be mindful but how can you do that apps go to fucking vipassana eat some mushrooms i know just kind of understand everything the interconnectedness of the world and everything and then you realize that yeah probably i need to make uh, 
some good decisions in my life <laughs> starting now but yeah not necessarily go with mushrooms of course uh, but things here around just looking at the note that I've written to myself looking at the time and looking at the video feed i'm starting to think like what the fuck am i gonna do because it, probably you can hear my voice but the video feed is just killing me i, I mean seriously this is just insane but luckily you're not watching or listening to this uh, only because of the visual <laughs> luckily for me i can give a something in terms of just um the audio quality hopefully but we'll see <laughs> if it's like piece of shit it's piece of shit just tell me um, i'll try to do something about it um and allocate proper amount of time to do it but yeah, anyway, going back to the mindfulness thing. So once you're there and you can then make decisions that would uh, be kind of long term thinking rather than, you know, here in the moment, because again, only by being in the moment, you can listen carefully and process what people are saying, understand the consequences, think about where you are heading to and whether or not you're heading in the right direction in the moment and then be able to make a judgment call and uh yeah just by being there and then you won't have a second chance in some instances so yeah it is something they can cultivate and probably if you can dig into the practices of being mindful you can get there I guess it's as ever the only limitation between us as humans reaching something is our own perception and our own mental blocks and our own problems and our ego yeah probably next time i'm gonna talk about ego I'm, I'm you know just mixing some topics here but i'll get there eventually not from the freudian perspective i mean freud was a great guy founder of modern psychology however nowadays people tend to criticize him and say oh no no no, no. he's no good but like he fucking made it popular i mean you just give respect to that person for just only doing this you know but yeah going back to the um, practices the only thing that is required is intent and the desire to do it and then some probably not consistency but um discipline yeah so motivation is there but discipline is more important so it is like this so for instance i'm recording this uh, episode and i don't get any feedback so it's just me shooting out there in the dark and hoping to resonate with somebody but then again it's a discipline it's just i sit there take time and i put my efforts regardless of whether or not you know i want to do it i mean of course i want to but there are moments where like yeah probably it's not heading anywhere it's just not going to pick up like fuck maybe i should just give it up and let go but then yeah it's persistence and the stubbornness that i mentioned before so it i was not up talking about myself here i was just talking about other qualities that are required for human to kind of get whatever the fuck they need so if you get a goal you're probably disciplined motivated and you're heading towards that goal so again it's just a fucking goal so if you want to be mindful and not only business but in general in life you can't achieve it of course but it would require a certain level of discipline so going back to the vipassana probably i'm gonna ded dedicate in another episode just talking about it because it takes time and uh, not everybody's probably interested in it hopefully i've uncovered the topic of being mindfulness in business but yeah just to give you a quick example here before i kind of wrap up because i got other shit to do give feedback to people uh who've been with us for quite some time and then yeah so quick example i had a call today earlier with one of the potential clients and um, there's it seemed that there is a need for a certain services that we can provide but yeah being mindful and listening carefully and being in the moment i understand that i can go in many directions i can go and try and sell something right here right now or i can share some information or i can you know just help in a different manner to that person or you know like many other directions i was just sitting there 
being in the moment, thinking about it all and mindfully choosing a certain direction which um, I wanted to pursue. Because again, through asking questions and understanding that there's a deeper problem on the side of the business, whereas the uh, uh, owner and the CEO is not a person who would probably understand exactly the value of the thing that we do. So for me, it was more important to kind of direct the person with whom I was engaging. It wasn't the CEO or yeah, it was a vice brand director to help that person in terms of like bringing additional value in, inside and kind of selling it basically for us. But yeah, I mean, it, it was pointless for us to sell our services to her because, well, it's him, it doesn't matter. Decision maker is not that person. The end person who is the decision maker is the CEO. So yeah, I mean, the goal there was to understand everything that was um, mentioned, said, and then comprehending this information not steer but make a judgment call basically to kind of direct the dialogue in a certain route but yeah i was able to do this by being mindful in that moment but help luckily i um i went to the boss at least once and i do meditate for only five minutes within the day but how do i do it morning routine 12 minute stretch and five minute meditation is just me sitting there concentrating on my breathing and trying to not get dragged away by my thoughts or anything that is happening in my mind, just trying to concentrate. And this is critical thing, concentration. It is required to be in the moment. So yeah, talking about the psychedelics, as promised before, at the very start of this conversation. It's not a conversation, is it? But anyway, so psychedelics. I've uh, registered for Berkeley's open program on psychedelics. Could you imagine this? Is this insane? I had a call with a person from another association that is in this area, the psychedelic. Uh, well, it's not a business segment. It's not a category. I don't know what the fuck that is, like, per se, because it's more of a research-based area rather than commercial. Well, there are some businesses out there, yeah, and probably they're successful to a certain extent. But then again, I was uh, in contact with that person who was... Uh, answering questions about a program that I got interested in, in this uh, coaching in psychedelics. And I was like, fuck, I want to go there because, well, I got experience in terms of coaching and psychedelics. I can integrate the knowledge and uh, put it to good work and help people heal. But yeah, I was just trying to understand whether or not that program was fully online or uh, offline. And then, yeah, well, the program consists of several blocks and one of them was just um, a participation in the physical uh, ceremony in uh, Costa Rica, if I remember correctly. So yeah, only fucking $13,000, which I don't have. And I was like, fuck, if only I had $13,000, I would probably just go there right now and say, yeah, please sign in. Sign me up. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't have that type of money at the moment. So yeah, like, yeah, man, just it's nice to chat with a person from an entirely other part of the world so the person was from us for him it was early morning for me it was uh closer yeah it was evening time so we got 10 hour difference between us i was just sitting there and zoomed like fuck this is amazing i mean i can talk about psychedelics with somebody without the fear of being i don't know prosecuted or being looked at upon or i don't know like this guilt or shame or whatever the fuck is there in the society that surrounds people who use substances for their own fucking purposes <laughs> but yeah i mean it was insane but after having their conversation telling them that unfortunately don't have the funds man i mean i want to go there but you don't have money so i went there i went to twitter and found a post by um either mark Pollan or somebody else but was about an open program by Berkeley. I was like, fuck, I'm heading there. So they asked me for some money, but they're like, yeah, I'll start with the free one and then we'll see. But ideally, probably I'm going to get a new education in psychedelics field from Berkeley. And I'm really fucking excited to know more about psychedelics from a scientific point of view. 
So I'm going to wrap up here and leave you. So thank you for listening or watching and probably that suffering. But yeah, next time I'm going to talk about Vipassana or some other topic. I don't know. Let, let's see you know, where it goes. So again, thank you. Don't forget to donate. Throw some crypto out there. Subscribe, share and uh, fucking like and throw some comments so that I'm not talking to myself. So thank you.